Hi, and welcome to MS720 Exam Overview. My name is Byron Castillo, and I'm a Senior Technical Specialist at Microsoft. For this section, we will talk about planned and configured Microsoft Teams phone. Planned and configured Microsoft Teams phone. This particular session in the MS720 exam it encompasses 25 to 30% of the exam content. Within this section, we will talk about plan usage scenarios for services and users, manage and configured Microsoft PSTN numbers, configure operator connect, configure team phone policies, configure auto attendance and call queues, configure auto conferencing, and finally, we will talk about configuring emergency calling for calling plans. Plan and user scenarios for services and users. Microsoft Teams is a service sitting in the Microsoft 365 cloud as part of the modern workplace service. Microsoft Teams phone is our PBX solution or a private branch exchange which is a phone system within a business. Microsoft Teams phone is the Microsoft technology for enabling call control and private branch exchange capabilities in the Microsoft 365 cloud with Microsoft Teams. Calls between two users and the organization are handled within Teams phone and those never go to the public switch telephone network. This also applies if they are located in the same or different geographical areas, removing blown distance costs on those internal calls. To interconnect the Microsoft Teams phone system to the PSTN, you could choose two possible solutions. Teams phone with a calling plan or what we usually call a Microsoft calling plan, which it will provide an all in the cloud solution with Microsoft as used at your PSTN carrier, or a Teams phone with your own PSTN carrier by using direct routing to connect your traditional on-premise environment to Microsoft Teams. As part of the planning stages, you also need to determine the licensing requirements. A user will always need to be licensed for Microsoft Teams in order to receive or, or get a phone system license. To use the Microsoft Calling, a calling plan must also be obtained, and that's usually what is called an add-on license. As you can see on the screen, we have an E5 entitlement, which provides a full IT and end user value. E5 does include phone system and audio conferencing, and it also has advanced and security and compliance features and user and organizational organization and analytics. We also have additional offerings like an E1 or an E3, in which phone system at audio conferencing will be considered an, as, as, as add-on features. Calling plan, on the other hand, is also considered as an add-on feature, and it comes in two different flavors, a domestic plan uh, only, as well as a domestic and international calling plan. When it comes to planning for Teams phone devices, Microsoft Teams supports a wide portfolio of desk phones for users who require a traditional phone. To deliver a high quality and reliable Microsoft Teams experience on phones, we have partnered and actively working with Yealink, Crestron, Lenovo, Poly, and Audio Codes, and we have to develop and certify a wide portfolio of desk phones and conference room audio devices. In order to manage those devices, you'd require or need spe specific permissions to manage those. Permissions like Global Admin, Teams Admin, Team Service Admin or Teams Device Admin. Some of the features that they're supported by a Teams phone, features like authentication, 
is speed dial and call history, meetings and calls, call groups, use delegation, hot desking, video phones, a better together experience within those devices. We also have accessibility features within those devices, and we also provide dynamic and enhanced 911 support in, some, in, in those devices. Plan and design Teams phone features. To use Teams phone features, your organization must have a Teams phone system license. Once the license is active in the tenant, it will provide the following features. Features like call answering, call hold, call history, call delegation, call on behalf of, call transfer, call waiting, call park, uh, call forward and simultaneous ring. Features are added by Microsoft regularly as the solution is continually being improved upon and evolved. Planning for voicemail. When someone leaves a voicemail message for a user in the organization, that voicemail is delivered to the user's mailbox as an email attachment. Cloud Voicemail supports depositing voice messages only in an Exchange mailbox and doesn't support any third-party email systems. When a delegate answers a call on behalf of a delegator, notifications are not available in Cloud Voicemail. Users can receive notifications for missed calls. Something to keep in mind is that trans the transcription service can be enabled or disabled as required. It is on by default. Manage and configure Microsoft PST and numbers. As we might recall, a Teams phone system license is the base license that a user will need in order to have the PBX capabilities within the product. We also have an audio conferencing license, which basically allows a user to dial in externally from a or dial into a conference call externally. We also have a calling plan, which allows a, a Teams user to make a PSTN call to the outside world. And finally, we have something that is called communication credits. Communication credits will be used when the, the pull minutes from a calling plan has been exhausted. You can acquire phone numbers from Microsoft directly to the Teams Admin Center. This type of numbers, they could be user or, or what is also called a subscriber number and service numbers that can be used for auto attendance and call queues. You also have the ability to pour numbers into Microsoft through a service request or what is also known as a poured order request. Configure Operator Connect. Operator Connect is a new type of service that we recently introduced into Microsoft Teams and which basically allows PSTN connectivity via a third party operator. Think about a marketplace within the Teams Admin Center. Once you acquire the numbers from a specific operator, those numbers will are managed just like calling plan numbers. Operator Connects keep, gives you the flexibility to mix and match operators uh, throughout the world, depending on where they have presence in the world or offering their services in, around the world, but also gives you the flexibility to combine or mix and match Operator Connect with call and plan and direct routing. Configuring Teams phone policies. Some of the policies that you can configure within the team service um, are listed in the screen. As an example, calling policies, which will allow you to control calling and call forwarding features. We also have dial plans, which allows you to normalize or their normalization rules that allows you to translate dial phone numbers. Think about three-digit three calling or four-digit calling. Call park policies. It will give you the uh, it will give you give the the end user the ability to to park a call and then the user can retrieve the call from a different location in the building. Caller ID policies. It gives you the ability to change or block the number that is presented when a user calls an external PSTN number. 
inbound call blocking. Inbound call blocking, uh, it, it allows you to block inbound calls from the public switch telephone network with a specific regic pa pa patterns. When it comes to configuring auto attendance and call queues, we will be dissecting each of the following topics. When it comes to design call flows for auto attendance and call queues, we need to understand what an auto attendant is first. We also need to assess the business needs for an auto attendant. It's also highly recommended to design and mock up the auto attendant. We also want to you to understand what a call queue is and also assess the business needs for that, that specific call queue. And last, last but not least, we also highly recommend to design and mock up the call queues. And finally, we highly recommend to on writing the script that will formulate how auto attendance and call queues work together. Understanding what an auto attendant is. An auto attendant really has a primary purpose to re redirect a call to a, 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 an appropriate person or department based on the caller's input to the provided menu option. Callers can be redirected or redirected to specific people in the organization. They can also be redirected to call queues where they can wait to talk to the next available agent or they can be redirected to a voicemail. Different call routing options can be specified for business hours, of hours, and holidays. When it comes to assessing the business needs for the auto attendant, some of the questions that you need to answer are, who are the people in the business? Highly recommend to list the users, their roles, their abilities. Also something that the business needs to answer is why are those customers calling? What are special considerations that each job function in the office have? What are the language requirements that the customers have? What are the business hours, non-business hours, holidays? How are you gonna handle the call during those non-business hours? For each of the just functions in the office, what issues do they need to handle for customers? These are some of the questions that you need to answer in order to start the design for an auto attendant. When it comes to designing and doing a mockup of the, the auto attendant, to complete this initial design, you will need a flexible and easy way to work out the hierarchies and the structures of users and auto attendants. You can easily do this on in, in in a blank wall or whiteboard, you can use several colors of, of pet pens or post-it notes and, and, um, and start creating and, uh, and, and do the mock-up of an auto attendant. Understanding what a call queue is. A call queue is really a, it's very similar to a waiting room in a physical building. Callers wait on hold while the calls are routed to the agents in the queue. Call queues are commonly used for sales and service functions. However, call queues can be used for any situation where the number of calls exceeds um, the internal capacity, such as in a receptionist in a, in a busy facility. Think about a call center when you're calling uh, to place a reservation for a Northline ticket. As you make the call, you, the ask is that if you want to talk to an agent, you will be placing the key one and you will be basically listening to music. As those agents become free, the call will be routed to the, to the agent that it has become free or is available to take the call. Like auto attendants, call queues have a language setting. You can use different call queues in, um, in, 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 in multiple languages. Uh, agents can be members of more than one queue if, they, if, if, those, if those agents are multilingual. You can also assign a phone number to a call queue. However, call queues do not provide a separate call routing for off hours and holidays. Unless you're, 
uh, unless your call queue is staffed 24 7 we recommend assigning the phone number to an auto attendant that will be redirecting that call to a call queue during those business hours when it comes to assessing the needs for a call queue the first stage in planning a call queue is to understand the business needs Try to map the business needs that you have for an auto attendant and also leverage those needs and try to map them for, for the needs that you will have in a call queue. Think about the needs in a call queue, like uh, how many call agents you will have in the queue. What is the existing system setup? Um, will the call center be active 24 hours a day or only during business hours? Uh, how are those agents being compensated? What is the usual size of the call queue in the existing call center? Uh, do you want to play a uh, music on call when those callers are waiting on the queue? So some of it's, those are some of the questions that you need to take in consideration when it, when it comes to the design phase of a call queue. When the business needs for a call queue have been identified, then the next step is to design and create a mockup of the call queue. Um, something to take in consideration is that the, you know, like the organization should decide whether assign a number directly to the queue or have callers connect to an auto attendant first. Organizations should also decide whether to have an initial greeting as part of the call queue. As an alternative, you can have an auto attendant provide that, that greeting message first and then transfer the call to a call queue. Organizations should also take in consideration or decide what type of whole music is to be used inside of the call queue. And finally, or an organization should decide how to distribute those calls among the available agents. And finally, you will have the ability to write the script that will formulate how, to, how auto attendance and call queues work together. Think about the greeting message, the auto attendant, the rehearsing and validating the, the, uh, the interaction between an auto attendant and a call queue. When it comes to configuring an auto attendant or a call queue, the easiest method for creating those, it will be directly to the team's admin center. When providing a large amount or creating a large amount of auto attendants or call queues, we highly recommend to leverage PowerShell. Don't forget to test auto attendance and call queues after the creation of those in order to ensure that they work as expected. You can also simplify the administration of call queues when you deploy a channel-based call queue. Owners of a channel can add and remove members from a channel without having to have a team's admin add on removed users from a call queue. Something to keep in mind is that this is limited to 200 agents via a channel. When it comes to configuring resource accounts, and these will be the resource accounts that they're used by a call queue or an auto attendant, those, are, those resource accounts reside in Azure Active Directory. The resource accounts will require a Microsoft 365 phone system virtual user license if they are going to handle PSTN calls. Assigning a caller ID will make it, makes, it will make it possible to present an outbound call from each of the call queues. This can be different to the inbound calling DID. We also highly recommend to configure an Office 365 group for the repository of a voicemail. That voicemail it, it can be configured for Office 365 groups. So in a way that when someone leaves a voicemail for an auto attendant or for a call queue, that voicemail can be of, will be recorded and then delivered and it can be listened by the members of that Office 365 group. Configuring the call queue conferencing mode. The conference mode significantly reduces the amount of time it takes for a caller to be connected to an agent after the agent accepts the call. Conference mode controls how the calls are connected to those agents. When the option is turned off, a call is connected to a call agent using the traditional transfer method. 
if the option is is on, or in this case, conference conference mode on, on mode is on, a call is connected to an agent much faster. As it, as it spins up a conference and it brings the relevant the relevant agents and the hosted number. Something to keep in mind is that for conferencing mode to work, all agents need to be on Teams only mode. Configure call queue routing methods. You can choose either attendant, serial, longest aisle, or round robin as a distribution method. All new and existing call queues will have attendant routing selected by default. Another step that needs to be taken in consideration when configuring auto attendance and call queues are holidays. You can use the Teams holiday feature to provide alternate messages and routing to callers for a specific dates and times when departments, call queues, or people in the organization will be following different working hours or, or, or won't be available. As part of the configuration method for call queues, auto attendance, and voicemail, we highly recommend implementing custom hold music for music on hold. Music on hold allows the organization to have their own advertisement included as necessary. Configuring auto conferencing. Although this, this, this option is, is, is optional uh, and it's not often used, sometimes companies might want to uh, change the default audio bridge number. Um, they might also want to add additional toll and toll free numbers. Um, Something to keep in mind is that if you advertise a toll-free number as your default number uh, for, uh, for audio conferencing, communication credits will be used for, for that specific scenario. Configure emergency calling for calling plans. As part of the process of obtaining phone numbers within the Microsoft Teams call, uh, calling plan, um, we are to, to create or define emergency calling addresses first. Once those emergency addresses have been created, then you can configure emergency calling policies. Some of those the, the emergency policy the, the emergency calling policies will have will have a set of settings on what to do when a emergency call is placed. Uh, set, uh, Options like send a notification only to an, an, an emergency desk to the to the uh, within the company, or conference in uh, a, cert, a, a, a an emergency desk within the company, and uh, and mute the line uh, and, and make them unable to unmute, or conference them in, um, they will be muted, but they can unmute themselves. As part of the configuration of, emer of emergency calling and emergency locations, we highly recommend to configure network locations for, that, for the dynamic emergency calling. Uh, when you create your buildings or your network uh, locations, we highly recommend to add your network sites, which will be a group of, a, a group of subnets. Uh, we also recommend to add your trusted IPs, which will be your enterprise public external IP addresses and map a network to a, an, a specific emergency address. Let's say um, your, your, your branch location sitting in Tampa and you have maybe uh, five different floors. You might want to consolidate all those, uh, um, all those subnets that service in the floor to that specific emergency address.